of you have been debating for the past several months uh, two big questions through this nomination fight. Who is the most consistent conservative candidate among you, and which of you is best able to defeat President Obama? And, and Governor Romney, Speaker Gingrich crystallized his argument a couple of weeks ago. He said, and I quote, I'm a lot more conservative than Mitt Romney and a lot more electable than anyone else. I know you don't agree with that. Why? <laughs> well, of course I don't agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think most people agree with that. Uh, Speaker Gingrich has been in government for a long time, and we can look at his record, we can look at my record, but really this is more about, about us talking about what we believe. And, and whether we can lead the country at a time when, when we need to restore the kind of values that make America the greatest nation on earth. We have in Washington a president who believes in a fundamental transformation of America into an entitlement society where the government takes for some, from some and gives to everybody else. And the only people that do real well in that setting are the people in the government. This nation was founded on the principle of being a merit society where education, hard work, risk taking, have lifted certain individuals and they have helped lift, lift the entire nation. That's what's going on today. And the reason I ought to be the nominee of our party is I believe I can take that message to our president and to the American people and they'll say Mitt Romney understands the economy because he's lived in it. I understand a merit-based society. I believe in the principles that made America the greatest nation on earth. And Speaker Gingrich and I have a lot of places where we disagree. We'll talk Why about those. Why don't you those. name them? Well, places where we disagree? Um, let's see. Um, uh, we could start with, uh, with his idea to, to have a, a lunar colony that would mine uh, minerals from the, from the moon. I'm not in favor of spending that kind of money to do that. Um, <laughs> he said that he, he would like to uh, eliminate, in some cases, the child labor laws so that kids could clean schools. I don't agree with that, that idea. Uh, his plan on capital gains, to remove capital gains for people uh, at the very highest level of income is different than mine. I'd, I'd uh, eliminate capital gains, interest and dividends for people in middle income. So uh, we have differences of viewpoint on, on some issues, but, uh, but the real difference, I believe, is our backgrounds. I spent my life in the private sector. I, I understand how the economy works. And I believe that for Americans, to, uh, to say goodbye to President Obama and elect a Republican, they need to have confidence that the person they're electing knows how to make this economy work again and create jobs for the American middle class. Your response? Now, <clears throat> just a second. You had four allegations. Do I get four responses? Take your time. <clears throat> okay. Let's, let's start with the last one. Let's be candid. The only reason you didn't become a career politician is you lost to Teddy Kennedy in 1994. Well, now, now wait a second. Now, wait a second. You'll, okay, you'll get ahead. another response. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> do, I, do I get to go ahead? I go, please, look? please. No, and I'm just saying, I, I looked at it, I thought, you know, I'm a citizen. I've served the country in many ways. You're a citizen. You've served the country in many ways. But it's a bit much. You'd have been a 17-year career politician by now if you'd won. That's, that's all I'm saying on that one. Now, number two, I'm proud of trying to find things that give young people a reason to study science and math and technology and telling them that someday in their lifetime they could dream of going to the moon, they could dream of going to Mars. I grew up in a generation where the space program was real, where it was important, and where, frankly, it is tragic that NASA has been so bureaucratized, aims that you, Iowa State's a perfect example. Iowa State's doing brilliant things, attracting brilliant students. I want to give them places to go and things to do, and I'm happy to defend the idea that America should be in space and should be there in an aggressive, entrepreneurial way. Third, as to schools, I think virtually every person up here worked at a young age. What I suggested was kids ought to be allowed to work part-time in school, particularly in the poorest neighborhoods, both because they could use the money. If you take one half of the New York janitors who are unionized and paid more than the teachers, an entry-level janitor gets paid twice as much as an entry-level teacher. You take half those janitors, you could, give virtually, you could give lots of poor kids a work experience in the cafeteria, in the school library, in the front office, in a lot of different things. I'll stand by the idea young people ought to learn how to work. Middle-class kids do it routinely. We should give poor kids the same chance to pursue happiness. Finally, on... <laughs> in capital gains, Matt, I asked you about this at Dartmouth. I'm astonished. You're a businessman. You want to create jobs. A $200,000 cap on your capital gains tax cut is lower than Obama. 
Now, you know, if you really want to create jobs, you want to, you want to encourage the people who make more than $200,000 who actually have capital to invest the capital in the U.S. I'll stick with zero capital gains. will create vastly more jobs than your proposal. Governor Romney, your my, response. Then I want to bring in the others. Yeah, yeah my proposal actually does create 11.5 million jobs, and it does so by a higher a GDP growth rate than we've seen over these last Obama years. And, and in my view, the place that we could spend our precious tax dollars for a tax cut is on the middle class that's been most hurt by the Obama economy. I, that's where I want to eliminate taxes on interest, dividends, and capital gains. And with regards to the idea that if I'd have beaten Ted Kennedy, I could have been a career politician, that's probably true. I, uh, if, if I would have been able to get in the NFL like I hoped when I was a kid, well, I'd have been a football star all my life, too. <laughs> but I, but I, but I, I spent, I spent my life in the private sector. Losing to Teddy, Teddy Kennedy was probably the best thing I could have done for, for preparing me for the job I'm seeking because it, it put me back in the private sector. I worked in the private sector. I learned lessons there that are desperately needed in Washington. I want to we, don't need, we don't need folks who are lifetime, lifetime Washington people to, to, to get this country out of the mess it's in. We need people from outside Washington, outside K Street. Uh, and, and by the way, one more thing, to have kids work in the, in the library and to, and to help out in school and to clean the blackboards does not require changing our our, uh, our child labor laws in this country. We of course should encourage we, our kids to We will to come have back to that.